It's the funniest thing, once there was a fellow, he was able to read minds. He said, I'm gonna let me read your fortune. He says, you're gonna be a famous painter one day. A painter? I didn't even, you know, he was doing cartoons and stuff. He says, you're gonna be a painter. But she says, you're gonna have a hell of a time. Elzer Courtois is a painter and printmaker who grew up in Chicago. He moved here at the age of one. His parents moved here hoping for better opportunities like so many African-Americans from the South. I was born in Richmond, Virginia, January 10th, 1916. I was geared to be an artist. Even in the school, they used to send down and get me to put something on the blackboard of Santa Claus or something for occasion. The teacher used to take us around sometimes to the museum. So a Goya show there once, Kadinsky, George Ennis. It was open too. Elzer was accepted to the School of the Art Institute, as many other African Americans were because the school accepted African Americans. They were not sent away. I wanted to be a cartoonist. In order to be a cartoonist, I had to take the whole course, you see, painting and all that other stuff. <laughs> but then I found out that I excelled in the other things, the painting part or the fine art part. Elzer studied at a time when artists studied design and drawing in a very classical sense. His focus is on the way that a picture is put together, as well as the elements within it. His pictures are kind of an amalgam of many different influences. They are not an academic realism. They are the realism of the mind. He developed his mature style using a kind of image of women, black women, as a, as a kind of archetype for all people. Later, he came to dance, images of women dancing, and that was something that he developed in Haiti when he received two Guggenheim grants to work in Haiti. I keep my passport still in line. I've been to so many different places, you see, you know, all over, all over the world. It's not that I'm restless, it's just that I, you know, I'm just interested. Like so many artists and other people who were unemployed during the Great Depression, Elzer was fortunate in that he was able to join the Works Progress Administration Federal Art Program here in Chicago, focusing on depicting South Side every day. I found a drawing that he had made from the late 30s of a man coming home from work, uh, very typical of his style at that time. With Elzer working on the South Side, there was, in the late 1930s, a push to establish an art center that would offer classes in painting and drawing and printmaking and dance and, and the various arts. It was officially opened by Eleanor Roosevelt in the early 1940s. The center is the longest continuously operating art center that came from the WPA in the United States. Elzer was a member, original member of that group, along with Charles White and Margaret Burroughs and many, many other great Southside artists. And so many people learned art there. Elder left Chicago in the late 1940s, soon after an article was published about him as an upcoming young painter in America. He had achieved some recognition and degree of fame at that time, and his pictures were selling. But like all artists who moved to New York from other places, he found it very difficult and expensive, and he had to do whatever he could. He walked around the city a lot. He absorbed the architecture in his neighborhood. There's a tremendous love of Art Deco. He loves the Chrysler Building. There's a group of things that he called the jewels, where these flying or dancing women are set against a Manhattan skyline within the form of faceted jewels, like emeralds. His work comes out of his, his soul, his heart. I have to do it myself. I have to find out the truth. When I don't feel like I have to change it around, and that to me is the truth. Like I'm looking at this now here. You see, I have to do something about that, you see. Elzer's had an almost 70-year career. The chances are that an artist will not have a career for more than 10 years. We just go on and just, just hang in there. That's all I can say. My mother lived to be 103. We're featuring Elzer's prints in this exhibition. We have prints from the 50s. We have prints from around 1990. One of the things that we try to do in a museum is to show the development of a very significant artist who is still alive at 99. And he's had a tremendous legacy. And you can't say that that often about artists of any generation.